Okay, so in this video, I'm, I just want to go over some ideas that might be useful for you in doing the homework. So first of all, you might run into a, a term called a Gaussian. What is a Gaussian? Have you ever heard of the term? You probably have. Gaussian is a type of function, okay? Uh, y uh, of x equals, uh, let's say, a e to the minus a x squared. This is an example of a Gaussian. So basic Gaussian, well, actually, no. Okay, so let's see. Okay. What, what happens if I graph it? Right. So without looking into your calculator, what do you think the graph of this function will look like? Well, first of all, it's even, right? Uh, y at plus 5 equals y at minus 5. When x is large, <coughs> let's say a is positive. When x is large, you have e to the something minus large squared, that's extremely small, right? So it, it falls off rather rapidly, right? So it falls off really rapidly. When I say really rapidly, it means much more rapidly than an exponential would. Okay? So in comparison, in comparison, an exponential might uh, do something like this. This is to the minus, say, ax. And well, let's say not a. Um, let's say that this is, mm, let's say if a was, uh, let's say if a was um, one in both cases, right? So let's say this, if, if a equals one in both cases, then e to the minus x squared falls off much faster than e to the minus x, okay? So exponential already decays really fast, okay? And the Gaussian decays even faster. So it's a bell-shaped curve. Gaussian function looks like a bell-shaped curve. Now, of course, there are lots of bell-shaped curves out there, not all of them Gaussians, but it is an example. And as always, you can shift it to the right, you can shift it to the left. So for example, um, uh, for example, you can shift a Gaussian to the right, right? So this is, uh, so this is, uh, here's a, another example of a Gaussian and it's, sh it's centered around X naught. This one would be A e to the minus A, X minus X naught quantity squared, okay? So you shift to the right. Whenever the argument of the Gaussian is zero, that's when it's largest. So in the unshifted version, it's largest at x equals zero, uh, okay? And at x equals zero here, its value is a, correct. And in this case, in the second example that I gave you, the largest value of the Gaussian is at x equals x naught. And at that point, its value is a times e to the zero, which is a. Now I have a question of what does changing, what does varying the little a dot do, right? So let's say if I have um, a e to the minus a x squared, right? So I'm gonna graph this thing again. Okay, so this is one Gaussian, right? And what would happen if I choose uh, so this is, okay, so y equals a e to the minus a x squared. So what would happen if I plot the, the Gaussian for different values of a? I want you to think about that. Pause the video for a second. So let me give you a couple of options. Let me give you a couple of options. So this is a fatter Gaussian, and this is a skinnier Gaussian. Which one has a larger a? Well, and the answer is, well, let me just state the answer, right? So when A is small, it means it's decaying very slowly. So this is smaller A, and this is larger A. Okay. 
larger a. A larger a means it's decaying faster. That coefficient in the exponential that sits in front of the, in, in, inside the exponential, the a, controls the rate of decay. Right? So a controls the rate of uh, decay. Now, it's not an exponential decay, it's a Gaussian decay. And on the other hand, if a, if a was made very, very, very large, that would be a very, very picky Gaussian. Okay? So let's say if I have something like this, it would be very narrow, very narrow Gaussian. Right? So this is, well, I can't draw this very well. It's very hard for me to to control my hand uh, properly. I don't know, some professors do it so well, but basically that's, it, it's something like that, right? So this is, this is even larger A, okay? All right, so that's what a Gaussian is. It's just a type of function, okay? You can have, uh, a wave function, uh, that's a Gaussian wave packet. You can have, you can generate a wave in the ocean that has the shape of a traveling Gaussian. In that case, x naught would be a function of time. It would be like a Gaussian kind of a wave traveling. You can have some kind of a time signal uh, in, in the radio or in the cell phone or something like that. It has the shape of a Gaussian. Because in the case, it would be a Gaussian in time. But it's just a function. However, it's a bell-shaped curve, and where do bell-shaped curves often occur? They often occur in probability, right, as continuous probability densities. Um, so there is a very famous example of a probability density called a normal distribution that's based on a Gaussian, okay? So there, there is a famous, is a, not maybe famous is the wrong word, but there is a common, commonly occurring probability distribution um, that's based on a, a Gaussian. I guess it's named after Carl Friedrich Gauss, right? Gaussian uh, function. And it's called a normal distribution. Again, Gaussian in general is just a type of function. It doesn't have to have anything to do with probabilities. Gaussians are very convenient. They're very, it's a very useful tool in physics. But in general, it doesn't have to have anything to do with probabilities. But by virtue of the fact that it's a bell-shaped curve, it's not surprising that it occurs in probability. Okay. Now, this is not a lesson on probability. Uh, when does, when is something when is a random variable distributed according to a normal distribution? That's a very good, mature question. And the answer to that exists. In a certain limit, there has to be a certain combination of factors that will ensure that random variables will be distributed in accordance to the normal distribution. Okay? But in many cases, that will be the case. For example, if I throw darts, let's say I have a linear board and I throw darts at the board, the distribution of darts uh, will be very close to, will, will be closely uh, modeled by a normal distribution. So what is a normal distribution? Now a normal distribution has a standard form. Okay, so uh, here it is, normal distribution. So I'm going to say it's probability of x, p, standing for probability. And let me write it down. First, let me write it down. p pi, e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared. Okay? 
so this is a normal distribution with mean or the average value being exact zero right okay now you can also have so this is here x bar equals zero okay um so mean right here zero mean okay and so here's an example uh, of the same normal distribution with an x with a mean that's non-zero okay so this is a non-zero mean and this is usually the case right so for example if a grades in a university are distributed uh, according well i guess grades cannot be negative but let's say you have some kind of a again bar and you're throwing the darts and you're trying to hit the middle of the board sometimes you will hit outside of the board so that's a negative x right so this is here uh, mean will be x naught okay uh, i may be jumping a little bit ahead and i want to tell you so first well if you look at this uh, definition it looks like cumbersome there's a lot of sigmas and pi's and and things like that so why is it written in that form why is it written in this cumbersome looking form so first notice that the a the big a of the gaussian is written in this form and the reason it's written in, the, in this form is is that this automatically makes the distribution normalized okay so first the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of p of x dx equals one so one can do the math and verify that the normalization indeed holds true the normalization is automatic and you can kind of see why if sigma is small and one over sigma is large that means the thing decays very quickly so to conserve the area you have to compensate for that by making peak very large so if sigma is small one over sigma is large right so the maximal value will be large if sigma is large one over sigma is small so it's a very fat gaussian so to compensate for that to preserve the area to to be one you have to make the maximum smaller okay, so if, if if sigma is large one over sigma is small it's a very fat uh a gaussian and the magnitude of the gaussian will also have to be small okay so if sigma is small one over sigma is large that means it's a skinny gaussian and it also has to be a tall gaussian in order to make uh, area be one so that's why there is a one over sigma in front if sigma is large one over sigma is small it's a very fat gaussian and therefore to preserve the area you have to make it lower and that's again why there is a one over sigma in front because it makes it lower so that's why there is a one over sigma in front because that's what preserves the area and when we compute the area we find that the area is one second a Gaussian, uh, if you have a normal distribution with x not zero, your mean value is zero. Well, does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense because the center of mass of, of this Gaussian right here is at x equals zero, so mean value is zero. On the other hand, when you have something like this, right, so this is one over sigma times two pi to the minus x minus x naught squared over two sigma squared, right if you compute the mean value from this thing this is how the mean value is defined if you take this integral i'm not going to make you do that but if one does it they will see boom the answer will be x naught great uh, that makes sense that's what you would expect the gaussian is centered around x naught so you would expect the mean value to be x naught and it does just by definition and third uh, so this is um, uh, third is if you compute standard deviation. Okay. So uh, remember what is the standard deviation? So standard deviation is the um, standard deviation is 
the mean of x squared minus minus the mean quantity squared. Okay, so what is this? This is an integral of x squared p of x dx between minus infinity and infinity. And this one, well, we already saw it, right? So this is the, the square of the mean. Here's the mean. Okay. So when you go ahead, grind through the math, what do you think you're going to get? Uh, so then I guess this is the standard deviation squared, right? So standard, devi so standard deviation squared is given by this formula. And so the standard deviation comes out to be, drum roll, comes out to be sigma. And this is why the normal distribution is written in this way so that the standard deviation is built into the definition. That's why this parameter right here carries the, the letter sigma because it's suggestive of the fact that this is a standard deviation. And that's why the normal distribution has this funky uh, uh, cumbersome looking form because it builds in automatically the standard deviation and it is automatically uh, normalized. The area is automatically one. Incidentally, since we're on the topic, let's say you have uh, the normal distribution centered at zero. Okay. So it looks, looks like a nice, beautiful looking bell-shaped curve. Uh, so this thing right here is one over sigma times two, uh, uh, root of two pi. There's a way to define the width, width of the distribution. There are many ways to define the width of the distribution. So this is a maximal value. Here is one half of the maximal value. It is very common to characterize the width of the distribution by specifying how far from the mean you have to go until you reach half of the max. This is called, so this is called full width at half maximum. Okay, so here's max over two. You go to, you find the x at which the value of the distribution is half of its maximal value, okay? So sometimes it's called full width at half maximum. Uh, and it characterizes the width of the distribution. Now we can actually go ahead and compute. Okay, so I'm gonna seek, okay, I'm, I want to seek x at which it reaches half, half of its maximum. So this cancels. So what I get is I get log of one half equals minus x squared over two sigma squared. So log of two equals minus x squared over two sigma squared, then this cancels. So x equals sigma times square root of two log two. Okay, and so full, so that gives me these points right here. And so full width with that half maximum equals two times square root of two log two times sigma. And when you go ahead and just evaluate two times square root of two log two, you get, equal, you get something like 2.4, let's say 2.4 is approximately 2.4 sigma. So, the full width at half maximum for the Gaussian is slightly uh, over two, okay? And this brings me to my next point. So in the past, uh, when I would talk about standard deviation, 
I would say several things. I would say standard deviation is a measure of the spread, and that's all correct. But sometimes I would draw an arrow like that. Well, I wasn't incorrect because I wouldn't define like what exactly does that arrow mean. But it would be more correct for me to say that that this is something like two sigma. Okay. In other words, if you have a distribution, if you have a some kind of a distribution, not necessarily Gaussian, and you compute the standard deviation. Uh, so the right thing, uh, maybe, maybe a more accurate thing to say would be to say that it's a measure of the spread of values and that a bulk of the values would lie to within sigma of the mean. So for example, I throw darts at the board, I get some kind of a mean value, let's say the bullseye is right in the center. And if, my, if the board is one meter and the standard deviation is, 30 centimeters, you would say that my results are half a meter plus or minus 30 centimeters, right? So you get some statistics of some outcomes, grades, or where you hit the board or something like that. And it's often stated that the result is, say, 70% uh, plus or minus 5%. What is that plus or minus? It's the standard deviation. So uh, really, the width of the distribution is more like two sigma. And in particular, we see that if you define the width by the width at half maximum, that's a strict definition of the width here, then that quantity for normal distribution, it's, it's closer to two sigma than a sigma, right? So, so example, so mean and mean score is. 72% plus or minus 3%, right? And this is the standard deviation. Right? This is the standard deviation. So my point is I should have oh, uh, when, I, when I drew the arrow, it would have been more, uh, more appropriate for me to say that the width of the distribution uh, is more like two sigma but it depends on how you define the width, okay? I could define the width of the distribution not at half maximum, but at a nine-tenth of a maximum, and then it would be less than sigma, right? So it's kind of a matter of a definition, like how do you define a width of the function? And, and this is also kind of a matter of convention, right? But when someone says uh, that the, me, the, the results are so-and-so plus or minus something, that something is actually the standard deviation. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, that's so what I just said covers Gaussian. So you become more educated about what the word Gaussian means. It's just a function. And since we're at it, I decided to tell you about normal distribution because it's closely related to Gaussian. It's a type of bell-shaped probability distribution that's built on a Gaussian, and the standard form for it includes automatically builds in the standard deviation sigma, and it's automatically normalized, and uh, it also includes the, the mean value in it, okay? Uh, and the normal distribution occurs very often for certain reasons that we don't have time to discuss right now. 